So one of the largest parts to nucleophilic acyl substitution it involves the inner conversion of all these different carboxylic acid derivatives. Uh, and the big thing here we're going to find out, we already looked at kind of the trend in reactivity here, the acid chlorides being the most reactive, the amides being the least. We'll see actually the carboxylates are even lower than the amides, but uh, you can directly turn them into a carboxylic acid by simply protonating, so you just kind of ignore them a little bit. Uh, but in this case, it turns out with nucleophilic acyl substitution reactions, you can interconvert all of these. Any carboxylic acid or carboxylic acid derivative can be turned into another one. It may not be directly, but it might. Uh, but the idea is that you can turn any more reactive carboxylic acid derivative into a less reactive one. So the acid chloride is the most reactive one here, and you can turn it into any of the others. You can turn it into an anhydride here, you can turn it into an ester here, you can turn it into an amide or a carboxylic acid or a carboxylate. You can do it all directly in one step. So if you look at the anhydride, the second most reactive, you can turn it into anything except not the acid chloride. The acid chloride is more reactive, all the rest are less reactive. So again, the general principle is that you can turn any more reactive carboxylic acid derivative into a less reactive one as well. Um, if you look, there are three places where we actually break this rule, and one of them, and the most important of them, is this one right here. So you can turn a carboxylic acid into an acid chloride with either SOCl2, we saw this with alcohols as well. You can turn an alcohol into an alkyl chloride, well you can turn a carboxylic acid into an acyl chloride. Uh, you can also use PBr3, just like we did with alcohols to replace the OH, substitute the OH with a bromine. Here you do the same thing and get an acid bromide instead. Um, so that's one big place you can go up. Another big place you can go up in reactivity is right here, where you can just simply take a, a carboxylate and protonate it. So not a, a big substitution reaction or anything like that, it's simply a protonation. Uh, but then there's one right here as well, and that's the amide. So it turns out the amide's less reactive than the carboxylic acid, but you can convert an amide into a carboxylic acid. Uh, now one thing you should know is that every single carboxylic acid derivative, all of them, are converted into a carboxylic acid if you add H3O+, every last one of them. Well, for the amide, you've also got to include heat. Uh, because, again, you're going from a less reactive to a more reactive, you actually have a, uh, an activation energy that's larger, it's not thermodynamically favorable as well, uh, and that's why you've got to heat it up to get that to work. Um, but we'll kind of see how this plays out, and we'll kind of see what are the reagents we use to accomplish this. They're all listed on this chart, so we're going to cover a lot of these reactions time and time again as we start looking at all these different carboxylic acid derivatives uh, as functional groups and all the reactions they do. So we're going to see these in a lot of different contexts over and over again, but the crux of it is this chart really summarizes all these inner conversions nicely. Let's play with this a little bit. So we're going to examine the inner conversions on this slide here and see if we can do them directly. Uh, and if so, what are the reagents necessary? And if indirectly, what would be the reagents necessary? So if we look here in this first example, we're going to start with an acid chloride. And we're going to try and turn it into an amide. And the acid chloride is more reactive than the amide, so we should be able to do this directly. So, And to figure out what you need to add, just simply look at what do I need to replace the chlorine with. This is a substitution reaction. In this case, I just want to replace it with an NH2. Well, then one option is simply to add NH2. And NH2 has a negative charge as an anion. So, and good to go. That is an option. So your next option, though, is to use the conjugate acid of NH2, a neutral molecule. And the conjugate acid here would be ammonia. So either one of these is going to work. We're going to find out that for these interconversions, there are three different mechanisms. And one of them is with a strong nucleophile, and that's what we're doing with the amide ion. So one of them is with a weak nucleophile, and ammonia here is actually kind of moderate, but at least neutral nucleophiles, not anions. Uh, and that'll be a different mechanism. Then we'll find out there's also an acid-catalyzed mechanism as well. And we'll find out that for the acid chloride and the anhydride, we don't generally do acid catalysis because it's not needed. Um, so we're generally either just doing strong nucleophile or weak nucleophile. Uh, and in this case, that's exactly what we do. Either one of these reagents, NH2- minus or NH3, will get you uh, this lovely amide. Now, in the next example, we've got an anhydride, check, and we want to turn it into, in this case, an ester, check. And again, that means we're going downhill in reactivity, and it's, we should be able to do it in one step. And the question is, what do we want to replace our leaving group with? Well, in this case, it's not so easy to see your leaving group. This one's symmetrical, and I chose a symmetrical one on purpose. It had not been symmetrical. Uh, we might have had to worry about attacking either carbonyl and getting a mixture of products, depending on which, which side you attacked. But in this case, it doesn't matter, so I'm just going to attack the one on the left. And I'm going to call all of this thing right here, that is my leaving group. And what am I going to replace it with? Well, I want to replace it with this ethoxy group right here. And so one option is to simply add that ethoxy group. And that also is an anion, a strong nucleophile. And that's an option. So we got like sodium ethoxide or potassium ethoxide or something like that. 
Uh, the other option is to add the conjugate acid, the neutral species. So instead of that, we could also add just plain old ethanol as well. And it'll follow just a slightly different mechanism, just one extra step uh, as it turns out and stuff like this. But either one of these is going to work. Again, with an acid chloride or an acid anhydride, uh, we don't need an acid catalyst. We'll find out, though, for anything less reactive, the neutral species by itself will not work. You'll need an acid catalyst with it. Uh, as the case is. And we'll find that out in just a second here with, actually won't, my bad, with this ester right here. So, and with the ester here, so we're starting with an ester, but at the end here, I want to make it into an anhydride, the exact reverse of the one we just did, uh, ester to anhydride, and that should not be spontaneous, and it's not. So we're going to have to do it indirectly. So, and the idea is we need a carboxylic acid somewhere along the way, because the carboxylic acid you can go uphill using SOCl2 or PBr3 to make the acid chloride. So somewhere in the middle of our synthesis, we're going to need to do this step right here. Well, can I turn an ester into a carboxylic acid? You bet. So and we can do that with H3O+. It turns out we could also use hydroxide followed by uh, H+, but in this case, we can do it one step H3O+. Uh, then we'll do the SOCl2. And then the question is, how do we do the last step? So and in this case, well, what do you want to replace this leaving group with? Well, I want to replace it with all of this. And simply, we could use that as an anion. So that's one option. And again, with the acid chloride, we don't generally do acid catalysis, but we could also use the neutral species and just simply use a carboxylic acid, the conjugate acid of our carboxylate ion. So two different possible routes there. Uh, so this last one, again, was not spontaneous uh, on its own right, and that's why we couldn't do it in one step. And in this case, it took us one, two, three steps.